Hi everyone, today we're going to paint some Highland cattle. These are a rustic breed of cow from Scotland, famous for their amazing shaggy orange fluffy fringes and horns. So grab your paints and let's get started. So I'm going to begin by drawing in the rather key piece of the cow, which is the muzzle uh, and the nose and the snout. Um, and I'm just drawing a sort of rough box shape and I'm going to draw the head coming out from the side. So this one is going to be sort of slightly facing that way, turning that way. So they have these wonderful sort of big heads uh, followed by big shoulders down to their little legs. And you know, this is a sort of loose, my loose watercolor style, but I know that we all appreciate a bit of an extra help with a bit of a line drawing. So you can see it's quite a boxy shape. Um, and then what we're going to be doing is sort of building out from that with lovely expressive watercolor strokes. So I'm going to be using large brushes. I've got my size four pointed round and I've got cadmium orange that I'm mixing up, waking up in the palette there, because we want our paint to be quite sort of um, bold and vibrant, but nice and wet as well. So I think a lot of people get a bit confused at times when we talk about adding lots of water, you instantly assume you're gonna make a really dilute, translucent paint, but sometimes all we're doing is we're just mixing up sort of a larger volume of wet paint that has still actually got quite a lot of pigment in it. So that's what I'm just doing now. So that just takes a little bit more time to wake up the paint and get it all nice and wet and ready in your palette. So I'm also going to get burnt sienna woken up here. And those are going to be the three main colors that make up our cow. So I'm going to begin sort of in the area, just sort of around the face. And I'm using these brush strokes. I mean, the cadmium orange and the yellow ochre are very, very similar, but it's good to have both of them in there. So I'm just using these sort of loose brush strokes, angling downwards, and then just sort of below the head, I'm gonna just add a little bit more burnt sienna and then Continuing down to the legs, I'm going to now bring in some Mars Black, blend that in, and then just do some nice sort of thick set heavy hooves with a nice broad stance there. And then I can just use the tip of my brush to add a few extra little shaggy textures to the edge. Now I've drawn my pencil sort of heavy so that you can see it, but ultimately if you draw it nice and light, then you won't be able to see too much. So now just working my way along the body and you can see I'm leaving some loose watercolor, sort of unpainted strokes just to get a little bit of texture in on the body. And the underside there is always gonna have a bit more darkness. So it's a little bit of the Mars Black. And then just to capture that back leg there. So you can see I'm working with very wet color that blends into one another, but it's also quite vibrant, isn't it? And then just put in another back leg there. The tail is sort of actually a bit long and got a bit of a, a wisp to it as well. So that's looking really nice. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move our attentions to the face. So I've got a slightly smaller brush, I've got a size zero. And um, Highland cows are particularly famous for their incredible fringe. So I'm just gonna sweep the brush down over the head. And it's very important here that we maintain some unpainted space to get the amazing sort of tousled hair coming down 
over the face. And then I'm just going to sort of loosely fill in around the sides, but in quite a sort of dilute manner, leaving the muzzle at this point. We'll have a few wisps going up as well. And then the ears also have a very sort of tousled, hairy appearance. So they're going to be just quite wispy too. And then we've got the horns. So I'm just going to mix up a bit of the yellow ochre in with the Mars black just to get a really sort of good shadowy colour. And I'm going to go back to my slightly larger size 4 brush and I come in above the ears and I'm just going to sweep the brush a little bit more darkness in there and sweep the brush that way as well and I'm just going to allow that to dry before we do the last little details with the nose. Now I'm going to paint one more for you, one more that's more sort of straight on. So again I'm going to begin with the, the nose and mouth and this time the head is going to come out sort of evenly from both sides and that will do you for the shape and then we'll have the big heavy shoulders that come in quite high up, an oval down into the legs and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the body kind of angling out so we've got a sort of tummy and then the angular haunches at the back and we'll have another, another leg and that's all you need really. So starting again it's nice to sometimes see these things done twice, isn't it? Starting with the main sort of torso of the body. Using the tip of even this really quite large brush, you can get a nice delicate Feel, and then we get a little bit of darkness in under the chin there. And as we get down to the legs, we start to incorporate some Mars black. And then I'm going to move on to the body and I'm not worrying about sort of letting that first section dry. It's absolutely fine to just keep going with it. Just be nimble with your brush and try not to overwork this piece because that is when it will start to look a bit flat. So a few shaggy hair brush strokes. And then that back leg just finishes a little bit higher than the ones in the front. You might see that one there as well. And then we go back to the head. So for a little bit more control I'm just using my smaller brush but you don't have to. So as a left-hander I sort of naturally sweep this off to the left but you might find it a whole lot easier to sweep it off to the right.
put a little bit of other highlights in if you want. Lovely. And then we're going to do our horns. One side will always be easier to do than the other side. But I say don't overthink it, to be honest. I like to drop in a little bit of darkness there. Right, now I'm going to mix up, I'm going to clean my brush off, I'm going to mix up permanent rose and yellow ochre and it makes a lovely colour. Need more, there we go, it's going a nice sort of corally colour and once that has watered down we get a really nice colour for the nose of the cow so what I'm going to do it doesn't look very different to the rest of it but it just makes a slight difference just going to paint that in So I'm really using hardly any colour here. And we're just going to let that dry and then we will finish it off with some detail. So we're going to just add some nostrils and a little bit of shadow for the mouth. So I'm just using Mars Black but quite sort of diluted, not too much on the brush. And I'm just going to bring it in with two little brush strokes. that just go from thin to thick and then even less on the brush a little upturned curve and then one last thing we can do just to give them a little bit of ground a bit of sap green here Just keeping it light, not sort of disturbing the painting too much. Just flicking the brush and some bits will be caught in the water, some bits will just stay nice and crisp so I'll just do that again so a nice bit of dilute sap green a few lightly placed horizontal strokes And then just getting a bit more green and just dashing the brush up whilst that horizontal stroke is still wet and as it will gradually dry we'll have more of the grass will maintain its crispness. And there we go! two cows from a herd of Highland cattle. Thanks so much for watching. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.